Hey everyone, how you doing? My name is Echo, and I hope you're having a great day. Today's Minecraft video, we're back on Minecraft Java Edition for the third and final part of the Nether Snapshot Breakdown. So, if you missed my first video, we focused on Netherite, how it works, how to obtain it, how to craft it, etc. In the last video, we focused on all the blocks introduced to the game. Where to find them, how to craft them, how to obtain them. Today, in this video, I want to focus on the new types of trees. Now, it's not necessarily with a new sapling, it's all done with mushrooms. I also want to focus on the new mob being the hoglin. This has a lot of work to be done, but at least it's already in the game. I also want to focus on the biomes, how they work and how to find them, etc. So, the nether is split at the moment into like four sections. We have this biome, which I cannot remember them all off by heart, but I'll show you. It features the crimson. We also have this biome, which features the warped. This one has like a red ambience effect, and this one has like a blue one. We also have one which has like a purpley effect as well, soul sand valley, you name it. So, unlike trees that grow on their own in Minecraft, these things, they're naturally generated in the nether, which we will go into, but you are able to grow them yourself whenever you want. Now, it's done with bone meal, it's the same way, and it's just done with the mushroom. This mushroom is called the Crimson Fungi. As of me testing this, I do not know if there is any other way to obtain these. Like, I thought bone mealing this would produce some kind of spores, and then you're able to get the fungi. Again, all subject to change, and more things will be introduced. If we right-click on this, this is the first tree that we end up with. And like I said, this is just ordinary nether warp block, which now nat naturally generates in Minecraft and Crimson Sten, and that's where the tree begins. You can also get this, which is the Weeping Vines, which I mentioned at the moment doesn't have a purpose, but you can also get a new lighting system, which is this one, which is uh, Shroom Light. They naturally generate in both sets of trees. This tree and the next one I'm gonna show you in just a second. But I think these look great. I think the mushrooms look brilliant. Now, if I was to break this and break this, put the red one in here and this one in here, you could do that. You can't place, oh, you can place them down anywhere. Okay, then. So, yeah, you're not necessarily having to bring things from the overworld. And like, like I mentioned, guys, if you want to spread the fungus, you're able to do this with netherrack. If we grab netherrack and we put this down here, you're then able to spread it. But if I did one here... It's not going to do anything. As long as it's connected to that, it's going to work. And it's the same with the red one as well. Put that there. Bow me a lot. It's then going to turn into the red one. So if we grow this one, this one's a lot bigger. You can see the difference here. I think this one can go a little bit higher, but this one is a lot bigger, which is a good thing because you're going to get more wood. It's, its width is very similar, if not bigger, than a dark oak tree because dark oak trees are typically four. This one's got... Well, I just broke one, two, three, four, five, and in some cases, some grows here, six. So that's, that's, that's a really, really big tree. I don't want to break it, though, because I think it looks really awesome. Some of the coolest designs in Minecraft. This is, however, new warped, warp block obtained via the trees itself. And again, you can see the shroom light. On average, this tree's got one, two, it's definitely going to be a couple more, three, four, five, Shroom light that generated in this one six so you're gonna be there for ages if you're after the lights as well All right, guys. so before we do go to the nether, let's focus on the mob itself So the mob itself it's called the hoglin the community decided this it's got like a mohawk It's basically the pig of the nether now It's not fully working um, The hitboxes are a lot broken whenever you hit it its legs go through its eyeballs uh, <laughs> The hitbox is a little bit broken as well. So if we try and like Attack it sometimes you, you you will miss it in terms of its strength though. It is a very very strong thing This is a netherite sword which has attack eight Now we've already done a little bit of damage to it, but it takes quite a while to kill this thing At the moment they are dropping rot and flesh during the Announcement reveal during minecon it dropped beef cooked beef. I reckon the drops that this thing has is gonna change I've even got a fully maxed out sword here Again, netherite sharpness, mending, unbreaking, fire spit, looting, and unbreaking. Even while attacking this thing with these, it takes quite some time to kill it. The standard mob takes one or two hits. This one took four. 
with maxed out armor. All right, let's go to the nether and let's check out all the new biomes. So we got pretty lucky here. We spawned in one of the new biomes straight away. This one is called the Crimson Forest. It's gonna take me a while to get used to some of the names. Uh, this one has like an ash effect. This one is a lot bigger than the ones I've seen at the moment. And just so you guys know, they have not renamed uh, Pigment to Zombified Piglins just yet. Because there is no Piglins in this game at this moment. Uh, but it looks like this tree can be as big as the other one as well. I guess it's all a matter of luck and they grow in different sizes. And I think these might well be vines as well. They are vines, just smaller ones. This one has the ash floating all the way around. Um... Still has the netherrack going on. There is a new command as well, and that is forward slash locate biome. So you are able to locate specific biomes. So if we wanted to locate ourselves a crimson forest, we are able to do that. But I'll do a little bit of exploring around here so you guys can have a full understanding of how it works. The biomes fit in absolutely perfectly. We still do have the same nether feel. There is still like nether flooring and stuff. This just seems to be like a a really, really big biome. And you can see this one does have the red ambience effect, which has been well known to Minecraft players for a very, very long time. Let's go to one of the other ones. You will find hoglins in here as well. I think hoglins can spawn in all of them. I think hoglins can spawn anywhere inside the nether at this point. I don't think they're biome specific. You will still find yourself some glowstone, but I think the shroom light looks way better. I think glowstone texture is how we all wanted the shroom light to, to look because it looks way better so yeah this 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 one's absolutely huge let's go and find let's go and find another one so i was struggling to find it but all i had to do then was just forward slash locate biome and we just type in soul sand valley we're able to find it and we tap on this it's going to take me to the exact location and this is where things change because there is a different feel i'm trying to figure out the exact direction so this is what I really like about this. The transition stage from like the red effect going into like the bluish effect. This is where things get really, really awesome. It's not just red now. It's not just orange. Now we have basalt. These are the things that will come down from the ceiling. They don't really serve too much of a purpose right now, but I'm guessing they will over time. I just love that transition. It's absolutely awesome. So in this biome, you will find skeletons. Skeletons will naturally spawn in this one. Now, it did not mention wither skeletons, but maybe there should be a small percentage of wither skeletons spawning in here. But I guess, again, if they did that, it would take away the whole nether fortress thing. You will find yourself very, very regularly bone blocks, which is good because as Minecraft players, we're now going to be able to turn these into bone meal a lot easier. We have soul soil. Like I mentioned, this can be used to make the soul torches. We still have soul sand as well. It's still going to be running very, very slow. Does this also make you slow? This does not make you slow. But this one does. Um, what else is there that I wanted to mention? Ah, the blue fire. This is just naturally generated in here. You know what I've actually never done? If we grab the netherite, if we throw like that in there, it just doesn't burn at all. It doesn't burn in fire and it just doesn't burn in lava. That stuff is absolutely brilliant. Someone mentioned though that when you are in this, although I'm not on fire right now, um, the flames of your player... Are still orangey red and not blue. I wonder if they'll add like a blue burning effect. I think that could work very well. Let's just do forward slash clear and get rid of my inventory here. And then we probably going to transition into the red effect. Yeah, so this was only a small one. This was only a small one. I'm also really curious as to how the fortress works with these biomes as well. So we'll go and check out that. There's one more that we need to find and that's the warped forest. And that kind of has like a, a purpley effect. So this one, like the other one, has such a beautiful ambience as well. This one looks like it warps from soul, which is like a bluish effect, greenish effect, into like a purpley effect. Now I'm colorblind, so correct me if I'm wrong there. With this one, I noticed in this specific biome, there was a lot of endermen. So endermen look like they have a high priority spawning inside of this biome. But again, um, this one comes with the... the the, the, the warping roots still has like the... Th ah, okay. So you can get crimson fungi inside of the uh, the warped biome as well. Okay. I thought it was just going to be color-based. But I guess the likes of the red does break up the other colors a little bit as well. And vice versa. So I think that is a great introduction to the game. This is one of my favorite. I mean, to be honest, guys, they're all my favorite. I think they all work very, very well inside of the nether. It's not a... 
it's not like they're not contrasting very well. The colors work incredibly well. Look how many bones that there is there. I did not know there was uh, fossils in here, but what would the fossils have been of? Because they don't look like the ordinary dinosaur ones that you expect in the overworld. They look like they work slightly different. I like how dead the soul biome is. Here we go. Here's a prime example. Skeletons will spawn here. So if you're looking for a little bit of competition, I guess this is the place that you're going to have to go. Right, let's do forward slash locate. So this one was quite far away compared to where we were at before. This is still the, the, the default nether that you experience. And I think they're still going to keep the whole default kind of nether experience. They don't want to take away that kind of feeling. I've not found a fortress that has had any kind of biome blended into it. Because could you imagine like the blue or the purple or the different kind of experience over the nether. Um, but I've been quite impressed with the first snapshot. This is still only the first snapshot. There is a lot to learn. There is still a lot to be introduced. There is more mobs coming for sure. So apart from that, guys, hopefully these breakdown videos have helped you. If they have, hit that like button. Take care, stay beautiful. Of course, I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.